Hi everyone, I'm at a studio in Oxfordshire and just beyond here is the new BMW M3 and M4, never seen it before, so you're going to get my reaction, right? I'm going to look up now and check out the cars because there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the look of these things. It looks good. I actually thought I'd hate it. Everyone's been going on about this grill, but actually this looks really good. I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I am. I don't think it works so well on the normal forces, but on this, with all the added vents and aggression, it does look good. Normally I don't like BMWs when I first see a new BMW. It takes me a while to get used to them because BMW is generally quite daring with its design, unlike some other German car makers who just like evolve them steadily. But this is one of the first ones when I'm made like, I like that, it looks good. Buying a new car? Head to CarWow to get offers from the UK's top dealers. CarWow.co.uk, the car buying comparison site. All right, and let's start this video off by talking about the design because that's what everyone's been talking about. This car has a definite snout on it. I love the contours here in the bonnet that lead into the grill. We've got this massive grill here with a vertical bar through it, which does actually work. Huge radiators behind there. You've got vents here, which are real vents. They're not fake vents. Big radiators either side, really sculptured headlights. The actual track of the car, so the width between the front wheels, is four centimetres wider than on the normal new 4 Series Coupe. And it's two centimetres wider than on the old M4. Really aggressive looking. But if you want it to look even more aggressive, you can upgrade it. This is the M3, and it's got the £4,000 carbon pack upgrade which includes carbon fiber bits obviously but you get a redesigned lower grill with air intakes look at those it's four thousand pounds which is quite a lot of money but you do get carbon elsewhere but i think it's worth it just for that look alone this looks like a racing car and then there's this green paint completely new for this car it's called isla man green and i love it now let's check out these cars from the side because obviously we've got m3 we've got m4 which do you prefer for me, it's clearly the M3, and I didn't think it would be. I thought I'd go for the M4, but I really like the look of this. In fact, there's a man from BMW over there who's hiding because he doesn't want to be on camera, who, if I ask him nicely, he might sort me out one of these cars to run as a daily driver. Chris, can I get an M3 competition, please? It's <laughs> if you guys comment below, go get my M3 competition, we'll make it happen. We will make it happen. Anyway, let's talk about the design. So let's kick off with the wheels. So you have 19 inch alloy wheels up front, 20s at the back. You can get two designs and you can see the two different designs here. And you can get them in two different colors as well. These are the black ones, you can have them polished. Moving down the side, we've got the classic fake air breather there. It's just a piece of plastic, doesn't do anything. You've also got the classic fistable M door mirrors. I've got my hand stuck. <laughs> These side skirts are really, really pronounced. Look at that. But my favorite bit is this, look. The rear wheel arches, especially on this M3, they really, really stick out. Make this car, like I said at the beginning, look like a racing car. Then you've got a carbon fiber roof to help keep the center of gravity as low as possible. Apparently, the only things that are carried over from the normal three series are the doors, all the other body panels, completely new. Same on the four series over there. I'm really liking this. I keep saying that, don't I? Everyone goes on that I'm a BMW fanboy. I'm not, but I do genuinely like this car. Sort me one out, Chris. Actually, there is one other body panel that is shared with the normal three series, and it's the boot, but you do get this little spoiler there. Obviously, it's in carbon fiber because this has the carbon pack on it. Also, this big rear diffuser, that's in carbon fiber. The important thing is this though. Look how big these exhausts are. And actually, we don't need the carbon sticker tree for this because you can see right down into the exhaust muffler. There is no fakery here. In fact, I can fit my fist in there. <laughs> That's insane. Now let's just move over to the M4 over here to see the difference. Now from this angle, it reminds me of a little M8. This one has just the normal shiny gloss black plastic diffuser. Do you prefer the carbon? If you buy one of these cars, I do highly recommend that extra four grand for the carbon upgrade. One choice you don't have to make though is whether to go for the normal M4 or M3 or the competition versions here in the UK because we only get the competition model and that benefits from things like smoked tail lamps. Smoky. Now let's talk about the interior changes over the normal four series. So of course you get an M Sport steering wheel with the classic overly fat, girthy steering wheel rim. 
Mm. I like the stitching in there, that's nice. And you've got your M badge there. Key upgrade here is we've got carbon fiber on the steering wheel. You've even got carbon fiber gear selectors. Then there's your M selection buttons there. So your preset M1 or M2. You've got an M gear selector and you can change the ferocity of the shifts using that button there. You also get stop start button in red, M4 logo down here. And this area here is carbon fiber as well, as is up here. Now, a lot of people used to spec the carbon fiber for the interior when they bought the previous generation version. So BMW just decided to make it standard. Another thing I like is this, look, the M stitching here on the seat belt, and you've got M4 competition on the sills there as well. Now, as standard, this car is fully loaded, so you get the big infotainment system, the top of the range one, which now has Android Auto and it's wireless. Also get a heads-up display as standard and a Harman Kardon stereo. And one last thing to mention, the M Sport seats, which are really nice, which have this area here, which illuminate, and you can pay an extra £300 if you want them two-tone like this, otherwise they're just single colour. You don't want those normal seats though when you can have these upgraded carbon fiber bucket seats. I love the vents that they've got in them. They're really nice. And even though they are carbon fiber, they are also, look, fully electric. They don't come cheap though, three and a half thousand pounds. Right, and everybody, this is what you're all really here for, isn't it? It's the engine, three litre, straight six, twin turbo, 480 horsepower. That's in the normal M3 or M4. The competitions get 510 horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque, which is 100 newton meters more than the old car, which is quite a lot. The engine will apparently do around 28 miles per gallon. Like my hands, it won't. And check this out, this extra bracing that they put on the car. <laughs> oh, you want to hear the engine? Can we hear the engine? We can hear the engine. We can hear the engine. The M3 and M4 both get a switchable sports exhaust as standard. Obviously, we're going to start it in loud mode and the car is ice cold, so we'll get a cold start as well. So can you start the engine, please? <laughs> yes, bit more. It's loud, <laughs> that's for sure. It's definitely loud. Has he got a soft limiter? So you can rev it from a standstill without the car moving to 7,000 RPM. But once it's warmed up, if you're stationary, you can rev it all the way up. So not like an Audi that will only let you rev it to 3,500 RPM. Thank you, BMW, we appreciate that. We're letting the car warm up now. You can see the rev counter allowing you to rev it a little bit higher as it gets warmer. The car is now warm, so let's hear some more revs, some higher revs. I put it onto quiet mode. Now rev it. Loud mode. I've probably now got cancer of the hands. <laughs> the M3 and the M4 get a six-speed manual gearbox as standard, so if you're really into driving, you're gonna love that. Unless you live in the UK, because we only get the competition version that has an eight-speed auto as standard. It's fine for me, but some people might be a bit disappointed to know that. The gearbox itself, it's not a dual clutch anymore, like in the old car, which in some ways is bad, but in other ways it's good. You see that old gearbox was a real pain to launch. It'd be temperamental, it wouldn't always engage launch control. Whereas this new eight speed, when I've tried it in the M8, it's reliable. It launches really well. So expect quite a few drag races with this car. The new M3 and M4 have upgraded sport suspension, which is lower and stiffer than their standard counterparts. Now, you also get adaptive dampers as standard, so that's really handy. So you've got a comfort mode for when you're just cruising around, as well as sports mode for when you're on track. As standard, the car is rear wheel drive, and you've got a sport differential over the rear axle to help distribute the power. Now, you can actually get the car as an all wheel drive model, both the M3 and the M4, and it uses the same clever four wheel drive system as the M5, so you can put it into rear wheel drive mode if you want to do some skids. Being an M car, you obviously get upgraded brakes. 380 millimeters at front, 370 at the back, and you've got six piston calipers. Lewis, have you noticed I've been whispering? 
<laughs> I've probably been whispering in this video, it's because I'm in a studio, this is under embargo, it's top secret, so I've gone into kind of stealth mode, I don't actually need to be whispering. Anyway, for the first time ever, you can actually change the colour of the calipers if you want to, and if you want to change the brakes, you can upgrade to the carbon ceramics. Now they come as part of a pack for £8,000. You've got 400 millimetre discs up front and they'll reduce fade if you're out on track. Now, as part of that pack, you also get top speed, de restricted to 180 miles an hour rather than the usual 155 miles an hour. In the interest of balanced motoring journalism, I should point out some of the negatives about these new cars. The first is the starting price. So the M3 starts from 75 grand. This is about 1,200 quid more. And that's about 8,000 pounds more than the equivalent version of the old generation model. Boo. Then there's the weight. So they weigh 1,730 kilos, whereas their predecessors were about 1,570 kilos. So that's an extra quite a lot of kilos. Let me do the maths. 160 kilos, which is two blokes. Now, it's not so bad because these cars are more powerful, 60 horsepower more than before, so their power to weight ratios are better. Another reason for that weight gain is because they've got extra bracing fitted to them, like the braces I showed you in the engine bay. Also, they're quicker than their predecessors. So BMW claims it'll do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, whereas the old cars did it in four. And BMW's 3.9 seconds will translate in reality to probably about 3.4 seconds. The big news though, is the pulling power in gear or when you're just cruising. So you put your foot down in one of these, going from 50 to 75, they're a second quicker than the old cars, and that's a big difference. So then, what do you reckon? Would you like one of these two cars? And which would you go for? I would go for the M3. Look, it's got room in the back, I'm fine. I'd be a bit cramped in the back of the M4 in comparison. Now the cars will actually be delivered in March, which is hopefully when the man from BMW will kindly give me one as a daily driver so make sure in the comments you go get matt an m3 or if you'd rather me have an m4 say get matt an m4 we'll make it happen